Good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this. I'm recording this bright and early in the morning here. It is RBC Heritage Week, the week after the Masters, everybody. And this is my first time wearing a flat brim. I'm not actually uh, sure. This is one of DraftKings' first hats out there. Just noticed that. Anyways, besides my little fashion anecdote there, uh, it's this is the week after the Masters, so always a little bit of a slow week since we had such an amazing week last week, uh, especially with Tiger Woods winning uh, the tournament and and really bringing golf back to the forefront. So maybe a little bit of an off week, but still plenty to play for and plenty to dig into here uh, as the tour heads just a little bit uh, north into Hilton Head, South Carolina for this week's RBC Heritage. And this week it's played at, and in almost every week really, to be honest with you, uh, that we play, uh, not every week, but every year that we play out here uh, at Harbor Town Golf Links for the RBC Heritage. Like I said, it's it's an island just off of Hilton Head, South Carolina. It's its own little island, pretty cool. Uh, the course is a uh, peak die design, par 70, measuring just about 7,100 yards. They'll play it at 7,099 yards this year. It's water, swamp, and native areas. Uh, will come into play in just about every single tee shot, if you're right or you're left. Now, sometimes, if, if you're following along on Shot Tracker on the PGA Tour app, you will see native area a lot, but sometimes it's not that bad. Sometimes that's only a couple of yards off the rough, and sometimes they are totally dead. But as you can see from the picture here on your screen, um, that's actually the 18th hole there with, with the bay and the water and, and, and the sound out to the left-hand side there. Now, the course will intertwine through the swamp uh, and watery native areas uh, with a couple of uh, holes right here on the ocean. Uh, the tournament has been played the week after the Masters since 1983, and we have actually one of the best fields we've had in quite a while here. 24, or just about half of the top 50 in the world, are here to compete this week. For DraftKings, or I'm sorry, for daily fantasy sports purposes, DraftKings is giving out 100K to first place for all three of their buy-ins at the 544 and $440 level, as FanDuel is actually up in their game this week. Uh, who knows, uh, maybe they saw a little bit of an influx from their Tiger Woods promotion that they ended up having to pay out. Uh, that If you didn't hear about that, that was just simply if you played in the $15 Mega Eagle, no matter how many entries you had, if Tiger Woods won, they refunded it. And I actually had 150 entries, and they definitely refunded all of my $15 for, those, uh, for each 150 entries. So pretty cool there. Uh, anyways, they're up in their game. Like I said, 50K to first for the $7.70 buy-in. Actually, I think it's a $9 buy-in. I apologize. That, that that didn't make my copy this week. It's actually a $9 buy-in uh, for that uh, 200K guaranteed. So pretty cool, pretty good contest for FanDuel over there this week. Now we'll go into the golfers. And uh, Bryson DeChambeau is the first one we're going to highlight as he joins Dustin Johnson and Francesco Molinari as really the only top uh, guys not the only, um, the top guys in the field. Uh, Bryson uh, had 29th at the Masters, but was really up and down all week. Had the first round lead, uh, then had a hole-in-one on Sunday. His first ever hole-in-one, no matter if it was a tournament or regular play. So, interesting to note about Bryson DeChambeau there. Uh, had plenty of DraftKings points as well. Course history gives him a third, a missed cut, and a fourth here. So, pretty good. Uh, like I said, uh, 29th at the Masters, 20th at the Players mixed in with not getting out of his group stage at uh, match play. And it's really his strokes gained approach where he's been struggling. Ranked 8th last year, as you can see, but ranked 71st this year. So maybe this is the week that he uh, figures that all out and, and climbs back inside the top 25 in that category. As obviously the course history here is pretty good, uh, other than the miscut in 2017. Next guy we're going to learn about, if you didn't watch the Masters, you may not have seen him. If you did watch the Masters, this guy held the lead after he walked off his 15th hole of the day, the 15th hole uh, at 12 under par after making eagle. Uh, sadly, Cantlay would go bogey, bogey on his next two holes and finish at 10 under and, and a tie for ninth in a fantastic showing, but still almost, almost won the tournament or at least held the lead at one point. Uh, course history, um, seventh and third. He missed the cut at Masters last year. Uh, the year before that, it was not a good finish uh, at the Masters. So comes here both years after the Masters and played very well. Seventh here last year, third the year before. So obviously likes the course. It sets up well for him. He's one of the longest drivers on tour. So interesting that he does so well here as, as this course really demands accuracy off the tee. But he possesses that straight distance 
And, and if you haven't heard me talk about that straight distance yet, it's just the ability to maneuver his drives any way he wants and put the ball in the fairway 300 plus yards out there. So that's why you see him strokes gained off the tee so good because it does measure the accuracy after it gets uh, past a certain amount of distance where you start to gain the strokes. So interesting to note there, Cantlay uh, improving his uh, strokes gained approach in the recent weeks, uh, 28th on the year, 17th last year. He struggled with the putter, um, ranked uh, past 150th. I think he might even be 180th on tour this year in strokes game putting. So needs the flat stick to keep going um, and needs it to heat up. This week, uh, 9,700 on DraftKings, 10,900 on FanDuel. So pretty reasonable there for your second guy in the lineup. Last guy I'm going to talk about today is Emiliano Grillo. And the reason I'm talking about him is just because he has been so consistent this year, making 11 of 12 cuts, only missing one um, about four top 25s, only one top 10 though. Uh, however, at 7,400 on DraftKings and 8,900 on FanDuel with a 15th place finish here last year. Uh, I like Rio and he was tested last week. He got in all four rounds at Augusta, which, you know, the finish there doesn't really concern me as, as a, a great stat that, uh, I've read this week on, on, uh, on past winners here is that, um, over 75% of the winners in the last 15 to 20 years uh, from this tournament have played at the Masters, uh, while only uh, three of them uh, have uh, finished inside the top 10 the previous week at the Masters. So Griot kind of fits that bill of playing last week, not finishing very well, been playing well this year, uh, has good course history. So uh, definitely like Emiliano Griot this week um, as a, as a lower-priced golfer uh, that can help you get in a couple of studs this week. So um, that will uh, conclude uh, Roslyn's three ball today. Thank you uh, for joining. I may have uh, forgot to uh, to mention uh, the, the name of, of course, the video series, Roslyn's three ball. So if you like this um, video, uh, of course, go ahead and like and subscribe to the AwesomeMoto.com YouTube channel if you already haven't. And of course, like the video if, if you uh, find it useful and helpful. Um, of course, if you want more useful and helpful information about the golf tournament, go ahead and go over to AwesomeMoto.com backslash PGA, backslash first cut RBCH, obviously the H standing for heritage. Um, that will, it's a free article that gives you more information on the course and the field and uh, statistical analysis on what it takes to win here. And of course, if uh, you're not a premium member yet, I just released my cash game uh, pool, my player pool for all of my 50-50 and head-to-heads this week. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, that's also, uh, of course, at osmo.com backslash PGA, backslash make the cut RBCH. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, Roslyn's 3-Ball for today, and we will see you again next week. But it's actually going to be a Euro Tour event, as the PGA Tour has a has a team event that DraftKings does not score for. So we're going to be focusing on the trophy, Hassan in Morocco, the duel for the dagger. DraftKings has put out, hopefully, uh, some satellites to that. So hopefully we'll get a good contest on both sides. So until then, cheers, everybody.